Why did MP Sir David Amos die? This is a question many people have been asking since that fateful day when he was holding his surgery in a church in Leon C, Essex on 15th October. A local Conservative Party member uh, who described the MP as his best friend said, I have known him for many years and he was so kind to everyone. A local resident said, what a senseless waste of a charming, witty and kind and gentle soul. Others have spoken to him as a good man, even a remarkable man, kind, compassionate and caring. Some of his constituents have even been heard to say, what will we do without him? So why did he die so tragically? Whatever the result of the investigations, the core problem is the condition of the human heart. Not the organ that pumps the blood around the body, but the real person. The Bible says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. It uses the little word sin uh, to describe all the wrongs that are conceived in our inner beings and in one of the worst cases scenarios leads to murder. Tragically, David Amos, like many others, was on the receiving end of such a horrible crime. The perpetrators of such crimes have to face the courts and suffer the consequences of their wicked actions. But that isn't all. They will have to face God one day. Can I hear someone saying, quite right, too? Please be careful in judging. There are other possible outcomes from what is in our hearts. Adultery, robbery, hatred, lust, temper, loss of temper, uh, deceit, lying slander, gossip, disobedience to parents, disrespect for authority. Every one of those and many more come under that heading of sin. The Bible's verdict is everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. We have failed to reach the standard required by a holy God. That's why our world is totally messed up. The Bible is also clear that all sin has consequences. There is a price to be paid. It tells us the payoff of sin is death. And people are appointed to die once, uh, then to face judgment. The fact is that each of us is destined for hell unless there is a way for our guilt to be erased. But I'm thinking of another man today. He too was murdered, not in cold blood by one man, but after being arrested because of the envy of religious leaders, he was put through a false trial and sentenced to death by crucifixion. Yes, I'm thinking of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Those who truly appreciated him had similar thoughts to the people of Leon C. Why did he die? He was so kind. He did so much good. What shall we do without him? In fact, one of the criminals who was hanging on a cross beside him literally said, this man has not even done one thing out of place. Every word and deed, not just good and right, but precisely timed for that circumstance. Was that really the case? It was. The life of Jesus Christ was absolutely perfect. He was and is unique. The only person who has ever set foot on planet Earth who wasn't and couldn't be contaminated by sin. Why? Because he is God the Son. The Bible describes him as holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners. Even those religious leaders who were determined to be rid of him couldn't produce a convincing case against him. So that the Roman governor to whom they brought him said this about him, I find no guilt in this man. Why did Jesus Christ die then? It's a question many people ask when they're confronted with the evidence of his perfect life. The root cause is similar to the one I've given for why David Amos died, sin. But the death of Jesus Christ was not as a result of one person's sin against him. It was to take the punishment for the sin of the world. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. And in the same paragraph, it says that he rose again the third day. So the death of Christ was not a tragedy. It was a victory. Although wicked men were responsible for sentencing him to death, he died on that cross voluntarily. He came from heaven for that very purpose, to die as a sacrifice for others. On the cross, he endured God's wrath against sin and he rose again victorious over sin and death. So there is a way for our guilt to be erased, 
by accepting him as our saviour. Those of us who receive him as saviour can borrow the words of Isaiah the prophet and say, he was pierced for our offences, he was crushed for our wrongdoings, by his wounds we are healed. What can we learn from the death of Sir David Amos? That the world is in a mess because of sin. And what can we learn from Jesus Christ's death? That there is a solution, victory over sin and new life is available to those who repent and trust their lives to him. Repent and trust in Christ today.